Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. Today's topic is about radio frequency and uh, speaker cables. Since audiophiles are always worried about RF and, and noise, uh, RF actually is a very, very complicated topic and uh, it's surprising that uh, audiophiles will latch on to it uh, without understanding uh, you know, all the complexities of it and, and true relevance of it to audio. Anyway, I'm doing this video because uh, there's an online uh, video published by uh, uh, Danny from uh, GR Research, who normally does decent videos, good videos actually, on, on the crossover design and speaker mods. But he's also started doing some videos on uh, speaker cables, and he did a demonstration that raised uh, quite a few eyebrows. And then uh, that sort of came and went, but he seems to be doubling down on it. And I thought we uh, try to replicate his experiment and, uh, and see if we get the same results he has. So let me first show you his video, and I've sped this up by uh, 50%, so we get through it faster. Let's watch. The video that I did months ago, and let's talk about that and what the purpose was of that video. So what I did was I took an old receiver, and it had an old connection on the back that you could hook up an antenna to for AM or FM reception. And back then, back in the day, when we when we used tuners and receivers, um, there'd be a connection on the back that we'd hook up what's called a T-type antenna, which would just be two wires run side by side, and it would go up the wall and then split into a T, and that worked really well as an antenna. And the purpose of the whole thing was to illustrate that your cables, especially your speaker cables, and it's every cable in your system, can be or is a, either a good antenna, meaning that it's picking up everything. It's picking up RF noise, which is radio frequency interference. It's picking up electromagnetic interference, which could be generated from your power supplies, from your gear, or uh, lighting in your room, and all kinds of things. Or it could be a filter, and it can be rejecting those things. So in order to illustrate that whole situation, I hooked up different types of speaker cable to the FM re receptacles there. And of course, a side-by-side -side zip cord regular speaker cable was a great antenna. And the signal strength on the meter, just because it went this way for you, it shot right up, good signal strength. And some of the ones that were twisted, uh, would go up a little bit. It was still, you know, there was some filtering going on in there because of the twisting. And then we hooked up one of these that was a multiple strand braided cable where the conductors are all crisscrossing over on each other. And it wasn't a good antenna at all. So it was, it's the type of cable that we consider to be a filter. And so the Flat Earth guys came out of the woodworks and tried to prove that what I was doing was invalid and you're not showing anything other than whether or not a speaker cable can be used as an antenna or not. It has nothing to do with audio and all that stuff that's in the area doesn't affect the audio signal and all kinds of crazy stuff. So yeah, we did that. <laughs> there are many arguments against uh, what he says, but today I want to do something different. Um, as he said, he took a FM tuner and uh, hooked up speaker wires to it and showed the signal strength meter as it's tuned on one frequency and uh, that a signal strength changed with different cables hooked up to it. And that's indeed true. That's what an antenna is. It's a piece of wire, can be an antenna, and different configuration of wires acts differently as, as antennas. And the question is, is it relevant, and was that test correct? One of the things he did was that he, even though he's trying to emulate what a stereo system is, we don't use a speaker cable hanging in the air hooked up to an FM receiver. We hook that up to speaker and an amplifier, and that has important characteristics. So. Let's uh, look at the test setup that I have here to try and replicate what he did, but much more properly. Let me go full screen. Um, I have a cheap zip cord, which he says is, you know, it's the worst thing and it's the problem type of cable. And it's indeed, it's not twisted. Uh, this is one end of it just sitting over here. Um, the other end of it is over there. I don't want to move it because when you move wires, you actually change the way they act like an antenna. But basically, the other end, uh, one connection is hooked up to ground, and the other one hooked up to the center pin of the signal and goes to that spectrum analyzer. It's hard to see the spectrum analyzer over there in my Tektronix uh, scope, but uh, we can bring it over here and uh, look at it in our browser. Uh, let me go in here, and so you all see the same thing. Let me. Uh, turn off the menu so we can see the whole screen. So basically all these pulses are uh, various FM stations that are around here and their carriers and, and sidebands in there. So indeed we see that my piece of wire is acting like an antenna and it's 
picking up a lot of uh, stations. So in theory, he's right. And as I said, wires are antennas. Uh, but look at what happens here. I have a Yamaha, cheap Yamaha, $100, $120 integrated amplifier. Uh, watch the display and see what happens when I hook this up to the Yamaha um, amplifier. Did you notice what happened? <laughs> Massive filtration of the uh, carriage. We still have some left, and I'll explain that in a second what that's the case. But uh, look at how much lower the amplitude is. I'll go ahead and, and take them out so you can see the effect in reverse. Look at how much they jump back up. So clearly we have a flaw in his example, right? You, you have to test the system as it's used, not as a component by itself in a different application. Yes, if you wanted to make different wires as antennas, this is a better antenna than some other wires, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, it's representing what we do. And of course, in a real use, the other end of this will actually hook up to a speaker, which also acts as a load. And by the way, in stuff inside of a speaker, it can be an antenna or it can be something that filters out RF. It's totally unknown. Um, in FM frequencies, the wavelengths are very short. So even something this small, like the connector at the end of a cable can actually be an antenna. So even if you have the rest of the wire twisted and you know it's perfect isolator, uh, insulator to RF, um, the connectors can pick up stuff to crossover components. Anyway, so we still have this, I've got this hooked up and uh, you know, somebody may argue, hey, you know, you're still picking up RF. I am, as I mentioned, you, you know, everything's, there's still things that pick up RF signals and that's a very sensitive instrument. So we look in here uh, and there's a vertical scale in here and uh, I've got a cursor up here that shows our uh, amplitude of these signals and it's hovering between depending on which station it, it grabs onto, 52 dB here, 57 dB. The scale here is an RF scale called dBm. Mn stands for milliwatt. I did a video a couple of days ago on, on uh, decibels and in audio, we use decibels relative to a voltage. Here, RF people use uh, power. So one milliwatt, is zero dB, but these signals are minus 60 dB, so quite a bit weaker than even one milliwatt. How much weaker? Well, we can take one of them, like minus 57, and uh, put that in here. We'll go ahead, put minus 57, a little online calculator, dBm, and find out what that is. So this is actually tells us how many milliwatts we have. So if this had been 0001, it would have been one microwatt, as it is, is two nanowatt, is my, if my reading is correct. So two billionth of a watt is getting picked up by this wire in the form of RF. Clearly you can't hear that because even one milliwatt will be hard to hear, uh, let alone, you know, two nanowatts. So these are very, very, very small numbers, as it should be. There's a transmitter miles and miles away. How much power do you think is going to induce into a power, uh, speaker cable? It's not going to be the kind of power that you, you can possibly imagine. But uh, somebody could argue that, hey, this signal, when it goes to the amplifier, maybe through feedback, it goes back and goes to the input and it gets fully amplified. All right, that's a stretch, but let's say it is. Uh, Typical uh, amplifier has about 29 dB gain. So let's say it's 30, so instead of minus 57, we'll have minus uh, 27, we convert that. So now we're two microwatts of power. So that RF signal has been reduced down to two microwatts. Even after being fully amplified by this amplifier, two microwatts coming out. And at what frequency is it coming out? Uh, oop. Uh, 99 megahertz in this case, 100 megahertz. We can't hear 100 kilohertz. How the heck are we gonna hear 100 megahertz? Now, Danny goes on to some fantasy logic where he says, look, there are other cable manufacturers who say their cables filter RF, therefore RF filtering must be a thing. It's like, no, all of you in the same business are promoting things that don't work. <laughs> the fact that you, you know, 
wrap arms around each other doesn't make the, the uh, faulty logic true. Yes, all of you claim things. And by the way, none of you demonstrated like I am properly demonstrating in the real system. You stick a cable up in the air with an antenna with an FM dial, you tell me that's proof? No, you gotta show me that my system as configured as we use it actually has RF in it and that RF is coming out of my speaker and somehow it's audible. Now, there is an element of truth to all of these things and that's what people tend to believe these because they, um, you've probably heard stories and you may have had a system where all of a sudden it seems to be picking up the local stations and through your stereo, how does that happen? Typically that's AM stations, not FM. And because of the modulation scheme is very simple. Um, that AM carrier can actually, uh, the AM signal can get coupled on your input signal, especially. Um, especially if you have live sound and you use a microphone, cables are long, they act like good AM station, um, AM uh, frequency wavelengths, and they pick up that and microphone amplifiers have very high gain, and that could be amplified, and then a simple junction in the transistor can actually demodulate AM and turn it into the sound that's riding on that high frequency uh, FM station, uh, AM station. So the carry itself obviously is not audible, but if we demodulate that, pull the sound out of it, just like a, an AM radio would, then that becomes audible. So that can happen, but again, the circumstances have to be just perfect for that to happen. It has to be that it's AM station, not FM. By the way, if I do this test in FM, AM, and I plug in this cable, it just all, you know, go down to nothing because it's very easy to shunt AM frequencies are much lower in frequency. And, uh, but even if that happens, then you'll know it. It's a specific thing Well, you, you'll hear a station in there. It's never a case that there's high frequencies, megahertz, go in here and they spit out some halo around music that makes it have less detail or have it be, you know, less analog-like, more edgy, you know, worse bass, what have you. None of that can happen with RF signals. It just violates the most simple principles of what an RF signal is. We'd go nuts if that was happening to us. We obviously can't hear it. It's all the way around. It's all around us, but we don't hear it. And audio circuits are horrible at, at amplifying, you know, frequencies this high in FM frequencies. You have to build proper RF circuits for them to have any performance at, at this high frequency. So bottom line, these people always talk about a component and with a hand wavy and maybe a crude demonstration like we saw from Danny, but they don't show you an end-to-end -end system. They claim that the end-to-end -end system is impacted, the stereo that we have, the sound that comes out of the speaker, but where are the speaker measurements? Danny knows how to measure speakers. He's got the setup, measure. Now he says, well, I can't show you with those measurements. Tough luck then. You, then you don't have any objective, reliable data. We can't just trust your word when in the next breath you're gonna go sell us uh, speaker cables. So bottom line is there's an element of truth to, to all of this. Wires do pick up radio frequencies. They're sort of an antenna. They're horrible antennas, but they are antennas nevertheless. But once you put a speaker in a low impedance load of a amplifier and low impedance load of a speaker, a lot of it gets shunted out and what's left over, it is so low in amplitude and so low in power that it just, it, you know, except for contrived and specific examples that I gave, they simply do not degrade your audio. Why do people hear improvements? Because the brain just likes to do that. You know, I give you a cable and I tell you all these things. If you're convinced that what I'm telling you is the truth, then you plug it in and then you focus more, you pay more attention to your music, and then all of a sudden you hear the separation between the instruments better, you hear a lower noise floor, the veil gets lifted, all the classic things. Your brain loves to manufacture things. You know, We dream about nonsense stuff at night, so there's no limit to uh, what the brain can manufacture. And uh, the only valid test for listening is to do a blind test, do it 10 times in a row, have some loved one swap cables, one for the other, and see if you get eight out of 10 right. Anything less than that, probability of guessing is too high. We can't accept that. But, you know, 10 tests with a speaker cable, somebody like Danny should be able to do it in, in five minutes, right? Get his, somebody works there or his wife or somebody. 
just with his back towards the system, swap the cables, put a towel on him so you can't see the speaker wires. He knows how to shoot videos, leave the camera running. You know, we trust him. Go ahead, use, use the camera. Have a log that we can see on the camera, but he can't. Eight out of 10 times, simple thing. You know, if you don't believe any of the instrumentation, just do that. If you're unwilling to do a test where you don't know which cable's plugged in, and therefore, you, you know, all the you know, clear differences are not audible to you. And you can't do things with the proper instrumentation, a proper example, like I'm trying to do with a real setup and understanding of the technology. How does it work? How could I have caused problems? None of this knowledge is within the scope of what he's talking about. He's just going in a classic gut intuition of, I've been to audio shows and I heard cables make a difference. Therefore, there must be a difference. No. You know, I can play the identical systems 10 times in a row and ask you if I swap cables, you'll tell me sometimes I swap cables, even though I haven't touched a thing. Guaranteed, guaranteed. I mean, there's, I'll put money on the table that he will fail to t pass any blind test whatsoever of these speaker cables. So that's what science expects. If you're gonna write a paper to Audio Engineering Society or Acoustic Society of America, the respected organizations, that's what they'll ask for. They'll say, show me some measurements that RF is a problem in here and do a simple control test where you don't know which is which. Um, do it on yourself, do it on a few other people. You'll be a hero. He'll get a medal like you would not believe he can prove that speaker cables, this simply that if you just twist some wires and stick them in, all of a sudden there's all this improvement. Uh, I can't tell you how famous he will become if he just passes some simple tests and writes a paper, publishes to AES. He passes peer review, he'll be famous. But now he wants to do a video and appeal to you and I, but uh, we know better. And uh, engineers do understand these things. Um, he has experience designing crossovers and speakers, but doesn't seem like he has any professional experience education in this field. So he's just guessing like a layman, and he's fallen prey to the same thing. Anyway, I'm not a fan of doing this type of video where somebody says somebody, something online and you know, and I'll go say the reverse. Um, but in this case, I thought it's a useful topic to talk about RF and what have you, and uh, hopefully you find it useful. Okay, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think of videos like this, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.